It turns out if we use these cloned Arduinos that I got from eBay for Hack Sioux Falls, what'll happen is if we put the intensity too bright and we've got 60 LEDs, they'll lock up. So you can see this one's currently locked up. It's supposed to be running through a strand test and it's stuck on pink, uh, which is a common problem. Now we didn't notice this in advance because I was using a slightly different cloned Uno and it didn't have the same problem. So these ones don't seem to be putting out as much current as the other one that I have. Now this is currently being powered through this little battery pack that we built. I showed that in a different video. Now what I decided to do is that we needed an external power supply. Now this one right now is currently hooked up through the power supply and it's running. But normally this would be hooked up to a computer or a laptop. And in that scenario, it also locks up. And once it locks up, just like it is right now, you can't write to it anymore. And actually unplugging it, plugging it back in doesn't really even fix the problem um, per se, especially if it starts to light up, uh, then what'll happen is it'll, it'll crash and it will stop communicating and the whole thing gets locked up. So what I decided we needed to do was to separately power the Arduino from the laptop using this battery. So that allows us to program the Arduino Uno via the USB plugged into the laptop. But then separately, we can power the LED strip with a second USB. And then we'll use the power bank here, the little power cell, in order to power the, just the LEDs. So I know this looks like quite a little bit of a mess right here. I'll go ahead and get that cleaned up in a minute and show you in the end how this works. But well, I'm gonna be building are these little wires. And this is a USB plug. Uh, and on the other end, and this one's not quite done yet, I've got some connectors. Now these connectors, I have two bl black and two red. So two power and two round. Now what I'm gonna use these for is to separately power the LED strip from the battery and then the Arduino will get plugged into the laptop for its power. Now we can also run both of them at the same time if we don't need them plugged into the laptop. So anyway, let me uh, turn this Arduino off and let me show you what these actually are. Here's one of these final power strips. Now what this is, is an old USB plug. Now I didn't have very many, so I went ahead and got a hold of somebody that I know that works over at Seam here in Sioux Falls. They do uh, recycling of electronics. And I said, hey, I need 25 USB plugs. Uh, I just need them cut off anything. They can be keyboards or mice or, or really anything for that matter. I only need this plug and then about six to 12 inches worth of wire. Now what I've done is I've stripped this down. I'll show you that here in a minute. And then on this end, I've exposed two sets of power and ground. Now one is a female connector and the other is a male connector. Now I did that on purpose. Uh, so that for one, these can't short out and touch each other, uh, but also because the way our LEDs are set up is they're already expecting a male connector. So then I've got this here, and then this I can use as a jumper wire to uh, common our grounds, but this can also be used to power the Arduino without a laptop. So this is the final version of one of these connectors, and I'm making about 25 of these. Uh, so let me show you through each of the steps. The first step is to cut the USB cord so that they're all about the same length. And I made them just for simplicity's sake, the length of this piece of paper. So they're all roughly 11 inches, including the plug. Then what I've done is I've used my stripper to strip down this outer layer. Now that outer layer is actually pretty thick and I've got these strippers here. And it worked out really well to do two uh, strips on it just because of the length of it. So I'd do half and then half and then pop those off. Now depending on what the cord was from, if it was from something like a mouse or a keyboard, it would have had a, a metal braid around it. And you may also find um, a string in there too or another uh, return copper line. All those got cut off and uh, trimmed all the way back to here. And then you have four wires exposed. You've got, in general, they're all the same. There's gonna be a green and a white, and these are our data lines, and we're gonna have a black and a red, and these are our power. So what I've done here is I've stripped these two off because I'm gonna keep those. That's gonna be where the solder goes on uh, for the leads. And then these two we don't need because we're not gonna use the data. So those can actually just be cut right off. There we go. So now that I've stripped these down and I've done them all at once just to make things a little bit easier, we're gonna slip this piece of heat shrink tubing over this and this is gonna just be for our final connection. 
and we'll slide that down to the end here so that it's out of our way. Then separately what I've done is I've created these little wires here and I'll just bring them in so we can take a quick look at them. I'll set this aside. And I have two different sets. These are the females and you can see each of them are already connected on. Now what happened was is I, I bought a bag of wires and they turned out to be too small for what I'm doing but they worked out perfect for this. So these were pre-cut and I've got them right here. So these are pre-cut, pre-tinned on each end. So they're very easy to work with on a project like this. The first thing I did was I took and I put a male or a female connector on the end of each of them. And I have a special tool to do that. Here's the crimper that I used. And this works really, really well. It's a little ratcheting crimper. These are called DuPont connectors. And what you do is you put a connector in, you feed the wire in from the other side, and you crimp it down. Works really, really well. And they create a nice, strong connector. So the only problem with those DuPont connectors and with this particular wire is that the wire is extremely thin and the, and the insulation isn't very thick here on this uh, wire either. So it doesn't do a great job holding this crimped M. So what I separately did is I went through and I just put a little tiny bit of solder on each of these joints. Now you may recognize these because these, joint, these uh, DuPont connectors are used in a lot of Arduino projects. Um, but you can see here, it's very, very small. In each one of them, I dropped a little tiny bit of solder in there and it takes solder extremely well. The only thing you have to do is make sure that you don't get solder up in the whole part, otherwise the pin won't work. So I put all these together. I've got about 20 of each of them, and then each wire is going to get one of each of them, uh, and then put together by black and the red. All right, so I'm not going to show you soldering these on, but what I've done here is I separate these two wires out, and then I grab one of each of the reds, so one of the male and then one of the female. And then you end up just uh, holding them together and then twisting them on to the red here. And then we do the same for the black. And then I just twist these together and then I put a little tiny bit of solder on. Kind of have to get a little bit close, so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. And then I'll show you once I get them both done. Now I've got these wires all soldered together. So I've got two reds and two blacks and I've got a male and a female on each end soldered together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend these over just like this. and I'm going to do it for both the black and the red because we need these wires to be going straight out. Then I've got some slightly smaller heat shrink. Uh, this is going to go on each of these and it's going to cover up this joint here that I just made. It'll add some additional support to it. I'll go ahead and add that to both of them and then I'll go ahead and shrink that down as well. So let me show you when that's done. Now I have those wires all soldered together and heat shrunk together. So now they're, they're nice and, and protected. I'm just going to slide this larger piece over. And I'm going to try to cover it up as best I can and get those joints in there as well. So I'll leave enough over the wire to go ahead and grip. And then we're going to go ahead and just uh, shrink that here with a little heat. Now we have the heat shrink all done and it's looking nice and uh, sturdy here so things shouldn't wiggle apart or, or break. And now we have the, the full connector. The only thing left to do is I just need to put these plastic ends on them so that they don't bounce around. These actually get the, the two, the ones with two wires on them. And these are universal so they work with both the male and the female side. So we just need to make sure we get it going the right direction. There's a small little arrow on here that you can see and I like to keep that on the positive uh, on the, the red wire. Uh, you see they're pretty consistent across projects although I've, I've seen them backwards but anyway I just want them to be a little bit consistent. So these slide right in and then they kind of clip um, uh, we got to make sure we get them in the right direction because they've got a little notch on them for the clip. So we'll turn that around and this slides over just like this. And sometimes they can be just a little bit tight, uh, especially when you solder them and crimp them. Sometimes you get a, a little extra solder in there and you have to even heat that up and take it out. But I think these will slide in just fine. And then they'll, they'll make a little bit of a clip here in this little slot so that they hold pretty tight. So it takes some pliers squeeze them in and then you may need to push these in just a little bit so that they don't come back out and then we'll do the same here on the female end and there you have it so now we've got a connecting wire here with usb that'll work just fine with our power bank so we can plug this in and then what we can do here is this end here with the, the male plug just goes directly into 
our LED strip, and then I take a single wire here, and I'll grab one real quick. And this is going to then connect our common ground. So this goes from the ground here, which is going to be the LEDs, um, or the power for the LEDs, into the Arduino ground. And then that'll just create a nice little uh, common ground with them. And since these are all isolated, we don't have any issues with that. Then what we can do is uh, use this power bank to power the LEDs, the LED strip, while the Arduino is then powered by the actual laptop. So I have this USB plug that I just made plugged in. It's being powered from this little power bank. And the Arduino I have sitting here, as you can see, it's not plugged into anything on the USB. Instead, it's being powered by that second set of wires from the USB strip. So right now, both the LED strip and the Arduino are being powered by this one cell, but they're being powered independently. So the Arduino is just pulling in a minimum amount of current. And then depending on the lights and the LED pattern that's taking place, this will be pulling in a few hundred milliamps up to, it'll be just a little over one amp, uh, which is more than enough that this little boost circuit can support uh, at a straight consistent five volts. And I've measured this and I've put a, a little meter on here so I can see uh, the current uh, is holding up. The voltage does, does drop a little tiny bit, uh, but it's not enough to trigger the LEDs to go off. So everything is being powered just fine. So what you'll see here, and I know it's a kind of a little matted mess of wires, but this is my USB wire coming in. One of the connectors is coming here, and this is powering the Arduino. So this is going into the ground and the V uh, in. So this is the, the voltage in. This does need to be a 5 volt regulated power supply, which is fine because that's exactly what I have. But you wouldn't want to plug a 9 volt battery in here because this is not going through the voltage regulator. This is expecting a consistent 5 volts. And then secondly, the second pair of wires is right here, and this is just connected directly to my LED strip. And so that's now getting power separately. So I plug that back in. And then the data line is now being is coming from the Arduino and then going into the green wire straight into the LED strip. So they're being powered separately, both from the same um, power bank, and that's where they're going to lie out. So that's what I ended up needing to do. It worked out perfect. It's not a really big deal. Uh, the only thing was I just needed to get those USB plugs made up. Um, they take a little bit of time to make just because of the little nuances of hooking them up and soldering and getting the heat shrink on and all of that. But anyway, I've got about 15 made. I've got to make about 20 to 25, so I'm almost done. I'll definitely have them done before this weekend's event. Uh, but anyway, this fixes our, our problem with the LED strip crashing our Unos. So we're back in business and we're in good shape. So again, if you need, if you have any questions, you can shoot me a message. If you're interested in a future Hack Sioux Falls event, go to hacksuefalls.com and you can sign up and get updates there as well or shoot me a message on that website. So that's all and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.